Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking another look at the Analog Pocket because there's been a ton of development with these open FPGA cores. We're seeing a lot of systems now getting ported over. It's like the floodgates have opened. Now where we last left off, there was a handful of cores available. Now as you can see, there is a whole lot more and there's now a script that will automatically keep your pocket up to date as these cores get updated and added. So I thought we would talk about some of the new cores I've been playing with and also look at ways that we can keep this thing up to date. One thing you'll see on here is that the Neo Geo core is now running almost perfectly on this device. It runs most of the games that I want to play, including my favorite one here, Baseball Stars 2. In our last video, the core had just come out and there were some issues with it but they've seemed to have gotten a lot of those knocked out. And now there's a whole bunch more to check out, including the NES, the Genesis, the Super Nintendo, and some arcade titles as well. So let's dig into it. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the pocket with my own funds. I did the pre-order about two years ago and it showed up just before Christmas last year. And over the last couple of weeks, it's gotten a lot more interesting with all these open FPGA cores coming out and hopefully some of these supply shortages are easing up so they can get more of these out into the hands of retro gamers everywhere because this thing is really awesome now and you can see all the different cores I've been playing around with on this device. Let's take a look at the NES and see how it runs on it now. So here is the NES core running RC Pro-Am right now and of course these are ROM files that I have stored on the Pocket's SD card. And as you can see, the game looks and plays great. This display is just awesome. And playing NES games on this device is really the ultimate portable experience, I think. And although the core doesn't have a lot of the features that you might come to expect on an emulator like save states, there's just been so much development over the last couple of weeks and improvement with this core and others that I don't think it'll be too long before we start seeing some of those things. There are some core settings that you can adjust here. So for example, if you have it docked, you can use multiple controllers. You have some image quality changes that you can make here, but not a heck of a lot just yet. But I think we'll again see a lot more of that in the near future. Let's dive into the 16-bit era, starting with the Sega Genesis now. All right, so here we've got the Sega Genesis running with Sonic the Hedgehog. And I have to say, the screen just cannot be properly translated with my camera. It just looks amazing, both in its color and sharpness. And of course, the audio on this and the NES core that we looked at a minute ago uh, also is performing quite well. This does not yet support the 32X or the Sega CD or anything, but the uh, general cartridge titles are going to, for the most part, run pretty fine on this core. And this core just got updated the other day, which greatly improved its compatibility. So there's a lot of community effort going into getting these open source cores working at their best. And again, this has just been a period of rapid development and improvement, which has been awesome to see. Now, if you jump into the core settings, you can see some of the things that uh, this core will let you change around. I have everything just on the defaults right now. I'm not seeing a lot of uh, options for scan lines and whatnot just yet. I think that's going to come through an updated uh, firmware update for the Pocket itself. But so far, these cores are working really, really nicely. Let's take a look at the Super Nintendo now. So here is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Turtles in Time running on the SNES core. The sound is great here. The uh, overall gameplay, of course, is great. And this controller is very well mapped to the Super Nintendo controls because it kind of mirrors that button layout. Your shoulder buttons are here on the top, which is probably my only complaint is that they are a little bit high up, so it does take a little bit of getting used to for that different button position. But beyond that, it is a really great SNES experience here. I'll pop into the menu and just show you some of the core settings. They do have a light gun option here. This doesn't allow you to use a light gun, but rather the ability to control the uh, gun on screen with the controller. And of course, you can adjust some of the aspect ratio stuff here too. One thing you'll note right now is that this core is filling up the screen, which is not the correct aspect ratio. So if we go over to use 4x3, uh, that should make things look proper here. And the other cores were uh, doing the 4x3 aspect ratio automatically. And that's another area of improvement where I've seen a lot of these cores get the screen aspect ratio correct as opposed to filling the screen. 
And of course, you can adjust that on the fly here if you prefer to have it fill the whole screen. Now, in our last video, we talked about Josh Campbell's awesome open FPGA cores inventory that you can find on GitHub. And he's been doing a great job keeping track of new cores and when those cores get updated. But with so many now, it's getting really hard to keep up with it manually. And the process of installing cores on the analog pocket requires moving files into different folders. It's not a very quick kind of thing. However, there is now something that uh, will make that process a lot more efficient, which is the pocket core auto updater. And I'll put a link to all this stuff down below in the video description. This runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And what you do is take the card out of your pocket, put it in a PC, and you run the script. And if you are starting with a new card, it will basically get you all set up with all of the currently available cores. And then every time you run the script after that, it'll keep everything up to date. And in the case of the arcade cores, it'll pull down a properly formatted arcade ROM to get everything working. And I'll demo this for you in a second. Now, of course, the pocket doesn't have internet connectivity on its own, which is why you have to pull the card out of it. But otherwise, this works a lot like the auto updater works on the Mister. So it's one click and you're done and everything is up to date when the script is completed running. Let's take a look and see how it works. All right, so we're on the desktop of my Windows machine here. What I've got is a brand new SD card here plugged into my computer. I downloaded the Windows version of the updater script from GitHub and put it on the desktop. I opened up the zip file and inside of it, we'll see this little file here called Pocket Updater, which is the application we're gonna run. Before we run this though, we've got to copy this onto the SD card because you need to run it from the root of the SD card to make this the simplest way uh, to get these cores installed and updated. So now that we have the file there, I'm just gonna double click on it here and you can see that uh, script doing its thing. And you can see now the files on the SD card are beginning to populate as it creates all the necessary folders, goes out to the internet and downloads the proper cores and supplementary files. And when this is done, we will have a perfectly configured open FPGA system on our analog pocket. It also will go out and find updates for the pocket firmware itself. So if there is a firmware update, it will grab that as well. So let's let this finish running. And when it's done, we'll boot up our pocket with this fresh SD card and see what we get. All right, so the updater is done, and you'll know it is done because it'll tell you here at the bottom that it's done. And when you're all set, you just hit the X button there to close it out, and then you just eject your SD card from the computer and put it back in the pocket. So let's do that now and see what happens when we boot this up fresh. All right, so we've got now this SD card that we just prepared fresh from that computer. We're gonna stick it in the slot here and boot up the pocket. Now, if this pocket was not up to date, the firmware would be getting updated right now. But because this is up to date, we're not going to have to go through the firmware update step. So what I'm going to do here is jump into Open FPGA, And as you can see from this fresh SD card, we now have all of the cores on here. Now, for the game consoles like the Game Boy and the Game Gear and everything, you're going to need to find your own ROM files for that. But for the arcade stuff, it will go out and grab the arcade ROMs and get everything installed properly for you. I'm finding a lot of these arcade games are kind of hit or miss right now insofar as how they work. So for example, with Galaga here, the only version that I see working at the moment is this last one, Revision B. And when you execute it, of course, you get the whole startup uh, test sequence going before you can jump into the game. And that's because this is running with the actual arcade ROM. So once this is uh, done going through its thing here, we can uh, jump into the game. So here we go and get playing. Now this again is the arcade version. It looks spectacular on the screen. The screen really has a nice contrast ratio for an IPS display. So these uh, black areas of the screen look super dark. It just looks fantastic. So uh, lots of fun, I think, in the future here as more of these arcade cores get ported over. And the ones that are on here that work, uh, work quite nicely. And then, of course, you can hit the uh, analog button here and jump into the settings for those cores. And I would imagine these settings will uh, change and be added to over time. But right now with this core, for example, you can just map the uh, controls or at least see what the controls are. But all in here, pretty good stuff. And we're just scratching the surface here. I'm sure we're going to be back with more 
but I am really excited with where the pocket is heading. It's really turning into, for me, kind of the portable mister uh, that I always wanted. And the fact that it runs the Sega Genesis, the Neo Geo, and the Super Nintendo so well, on top of all the other stuff that we've already talked about with this thing, uh, makes it a real winner already in my book. And I'm hoping we'll see things like the Sega CD emerge soon. So as more cores come online, I'll come back and do uh, more of these update videos. And hopefully there will be enough of these to go around so everyone can enjoy this thing. It's not priced all that exorbitantly, I think, for what it is. And I am uh, quite happy with the pocket now, a lot more so than when I got it because there's so much more functionality and it's great to see the community really diving in now and adding all of this great value to this great product. That is going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.